is most merciful. Assalamu alaikum. That means peace be unto you. This is Imam Sidney Rahim Sharif, President and Chairman of the Islamic Inmates Corrections Association of America. The first message for today will be a message to young people. In beginning our message to young people, it is important that we listen to our parents. Young people, listen to your parents. Respect their opinions and heed their instructions, whether you understand them or agree with them. When you make it a habit of ignoring the wisdom of your parents, you will lose respect for them and all authority. Always hold your parents in high esteem. This especially applies to your mother. Some parents fall short in performing their duties. However, it is not for you to be judgmental, nor should you condemn them for not so-called measuring up to what you think they should measure up to. You do not know the circumstances that caused your parents to not be there for you, in quotes. Do not say so much as fee on you or fui on you to your parents. Don't say anything that suggests you are mocking or ignoring their services and advice. And we have enjoined on man to be good to his parents. In travail upon travail did his mother bear him, and in years twain was his weaning. Hear the command, show gratitude to me and to thy parents. To me is their final return. That's Almighty God Allah speaking to us in Quran chapter 31 verse 14. Young man, young woman, your mother carried you in her womb for nine months. While in her womb, as a fetus, you were shaped and molded. Necessity caused her to gain weight as you increased in size. Her legs began to swell and her balance became unsteady as the size of her abdomen doubled. In addition, some mothers would become nauseated every morning for nearly a month during pregnancy. This illness is identified as morning sickness. After this uncomfortable period of nine months, your mother gave birth to you. While childbirth is often taken for granted, it is never easy. Both child and mother are very close to death during birth. Birth is presented as a normal event because it occurs every day. However, health authorities can attest to serious health hazards presented during birth. Medical science suggests that mother and baby suffer excruciating pain when the baby's body is forced through the birth channel of its mother. The infant's head and body is forced through an opening of the, opening of the mother's diaphragm under extreme pressure. According to some medical authorities, the pain suffered by the child during this event is similar to the pain one would suffer if dissected alive. Prior to the baby's pain, mother suffers the rhythmic, rhythmic pains of dilation of her uterus. These are labor pains. And it is these pains that causes your mother to love you and increases the, the closeness of the child during childbirth. Your mother or someone had to nurse and nurture you for at least 24 months after your birth. It is important that you reflect often on goodness, kindness, and mercy shown to you by your parents and significant others when you were unable to care for yourself. What would have happened to you while in an infant if your parents and others had simply walked away and no one was around to care for you, you would have perished. Young men and young women should never forget the womb that bore them. The womb that bore you is your mother. And though she may not always show it or express it, there will always be love in her heart for you. In addition, never forget the kindness and mercy others have shared with you as you matured from that of an infant.
You matured from an infant to a child and a teenager. Through Allah's grace, through God's grace, many people were concerned and caring for you when you were incapable of caring for yourself. You were not aware of your helplessness, but others were, and they took care of you through Allah's blessing. Oh, young people, you are not to take decent treatment, kindness, and other forms of support for granted. Don't do that. Express gratitude when someone says, how are you? And don't be afraid to say thank you when someone does you a favor. A number of people have assisted you in your growth and development. Remember to remain eternally grateful for the goodness you have experienced. Almighty God, Allah hates an ungrateful wretch. So, uh, dear uh, young people, we don't ever want to ignore the important parts of our lives, especially that part of our youth when mother was there for us, when we were lying on our back as an infant, defecating on ourselves, unable to feed ourselves or do anything other than scream and holler. And someone was there, usually it's your mother, to comfort you and to clean you and to make sure that you were properly fed. So please continue to reflect, young people, on the goodness of your mother and the kindness that she showed you when you were absolutely devoid of any knowledge or understanding of what your life was going to be. She was there for you then, and she's always there for you now. That is mother. And remember, mother is your best friend. I will repeat that. Mother is your best friend. Then after mother, father. Now over all of them is Almighty God Allah who brought you into being. So again, this message to the young people is to be kind to your parents, respect your mother, and you will be able to respect other people and to respect those in society. When you find young people who cannot or do not respect their parents, it is impossible for them to respect anyone else. How can you go into a classroom and respect your teacher when she actually represents that image of mother who is there to care for you? This message to young people is significantly important because there is a wicked influence in our lives and in the life of this world that causes us to do things that we would not normally do. We call this influence the devil. The devil is real and he has strong appeal. However, he has no power except in the trickery he wields. He beckons everyone all of the time and if you respond to him, he will regulate your mind. His power of suggestion is greater than you think, and he can trick you before your eyes can blink. When you do something stupid and you don't know why, you can rest assured the devil is standing by. If you're not satisfied with being your natural self, the devil will encourage you to become something else. When you decide you would rather lie, cheat, and steal, guess who will show you how to really deal? When you think you are superior to others because of your looks, wealth, or fame, the devil has made you a part of his game. The devil created his world for sport and play, and he loves it when you are only concerned with his negative ways. Play on, player, if this is your role. But remember, you too are being played and rolled. Always say, A'udhu Billahi Mene Shaitan Rajim. That's Arabic, for we seek refuge with Almighty God, Allah, from the rejected devil. Dear young people, do not play yourselves cheap. You have a human life to live, and it is very significant and important that you live your life as a human being and do not allow it to be controlled by influences that you are unaware of. That is what happens. And parents, I want you to be aware of the fact that you have to protect your children at all times. You have to protect them from their biological urges when they come into a, 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 a feeling of, of wanting to become sexually involved. You have to guard against that. You have to protect your young boys and your young girls from themselves. 
You have to separate them from themselves. You have to monitor them. Don't allow them to just come together without having someone to watch them. When you have a dog that's in heat, you don't let that animal run, run around because you know it's going to get involved. If you have a bull that you got uh, uh, roaming around, you don't let your cows in with the bull unless you want. You have to watch these uh, animals. The power to the attractive power that's in human beings is just as strong as that that's in animals when it comes to uh, cohabitation, having sexual involvement. So you have to guard those children, protect them from themselves, and protect them from each other, and protect them from the wicked influences that are constantly beckoning them to get involved sexually when they should not get involved. I was reading the other day about how a child went to school and brought some of the medicine that his parents uh, had been giving him for himself. And he gave the medicine to the other children. Now, obviously, the children were not really thinking about the, the probabilities or the possible problems that this could cause if they took the medicine. But they took them anyway. So this is just a small example, and you hear about them all the time. And you perhaps say to yourself, well, my child wouldn't do anything like that. But you don't know what influence the child is under. So you constantly monitor that child, talk to that child all of the time. Never get tired of talking to your children. If God blesses you with a thought or a, a concern that you should express to your children, do that. Do not neglect your children. And children, listen to your parents. Don't listen to what everyone tells you on television. We all have these cell phones, and these cell phones can be good for some things, and they can be very bad for some things. As a matter of fact, you should monitor your child's use of these electronic gadgets. That's what they are, the electronic gadgets. They are designed to take your child's mind away from this creation and to take their, your child's mind away from reality. And your mind, too. I've seen people play with cell phones like they're playing, I, I don't know. You, you know, you, their minds are gone. They're crossing the street playing with cell phones. They're riding the trains playing with cell phones. They're just playing. There was a time when you couldn't see a phone. They were all uh, at home or in a telephone booth. So why is it now that suddenly children have to have phones to play with? And if they don't have the phones to play with, something is wrong. That's when they start agitating you. So begin to closely monitor your children. Begin to wean them off of these gadgets so that they can get a good night's sleep, so they can go to school in the morning and not hassle themselves and hassle other students and above all hassling the teacher who's there to try to help them. Parents, it is your responsibility. Young people, it is your responsibility to listen to your parents. I pray a lot that this message has been sufficient and will suffice us to really uh, get a grip, encourage us to get a grip on how we manage young people and how young people manage themselves. You don't just live your life because something comes along to make you happy. Happy is relative to your health. If it's not making you mentally healthy, then it's not good for you. Just because something makes you happy, it doesn't make you healthy. Just because something tastes good, it doesn't mean it's necessarily good for your body. These are the kinds of things that young people have to begin to reflect on, and their parents have to help them think about these things. Parents, it is up to you. You never stop parenting your children. I don't care how old they get. They still want to know that mother and father is aware of what they're doing and that mother and father condones their actions. Children often will govern themselves by the way they think you would feel if they did something. So thank you so much for checking with us uh, with access on this particular program. It will be shown on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., and 5.30 on Sundays, at 5.30 p.m. on Sundays. Thank you so much, and may God bless you all with an excellent evening. And be sure and tune in on us again on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 5.30 p.m. And have your children ready to watch an excellent show that's going to benefit us all and question themselves and question yourself about the show. Thank you so much.